Chapter 81 of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Robin Cotter, July 2012. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter 81 Elizabeth Inchbald. Born 1756, died 1821. Cunningham. The daughter of a small farmer in Suffolk, of the name of Simpson. Having lost her father in her infancy, she was left under the care of her mother, who continued to manage the farm, and in the pleasant seclusion of this cottage home, Miss Simpson was presented with abundant opportunities of gratifying her literary propensities. So sensibly had her imagination been wrought upon by the tales of fictitious grief and happiness she had met with in the course of her desultory reading, that she formed the romantic resolution of visiting the metropolis, the scene of many of the stories which had so powerfully excited her sympathies. This intention did not, as may be supposed, meet with the approbation of her friends, but so fixed was her determination to accomplish a tout prix, the object she had in view, that she seized an opportunity of eloping from her home entirely without the knowledge of her family. Early one morning in February 1772, she left Stanningfield for London, and with a few necessary articles of apparel packed in a bandbox, walked, or rather ran, a distance of two miles to the place from which the coach set out for the metropolis. This step in a girl of sixteen years of age did not augur very favorably of her future conduct or respectability but the subsequent tenor of her life affords additional proof that very admirable results will often arise out of indifferent and even reprehensible beginnings on her arrival at london she sought a distant relation who lived in the strand but on reaching the house was to her great mortification informed that she had retired from business and was settled in north wales it was near ten o'clock at night, and her distress at this disappointment moved the compassion of the people of whom she had made her inquiries, who kindly accommodated her with a lodging. This civility, however, awakened her suspicions. She had read in Clarissa Harlowe of various modes of seduction practised in London, and feared that similar intentions were being meditated against her. A short time after her arrival, therefore, observing that she had awakened their curiosity, our young heroine seized her bandbox, and, without uttering a single word, rushed out of the house, and left them to their conjectures that she was either a maniac or an impostor. Her necessities drove her to the stage, where she met with considerable success, and performed principal characters when she was only eighteen years of age. After a residence of four years in Edinburgh, with her husband, Mr. Inchbald, also an actor of some celebrity, she returned to London, where she acted for several years at Covent Garden. Soon after, she became an authoress. Her first piece, the comedy entitled I'll Tell You What, was at first rejected by Coleman of Haymarket, but finally approved and brought out with considerable success in 1785. In 1789 she retired from the stage and devoted herself from that time entirely to literature. She wrote a number of popular dramatic pieces and edited a new edition of the British Theatre and other dramatic collections but it is to her two novels, Nature and Art, and The Simple Story, that she chiefly owes her reputation. She died at Kensington in 1821. The mind of this authoress had an original cast, and her literary style was peculiar, terse, pointed, and impressive. By exemplary industry and prudence, she had raised herself into a state of comfortable independence, but she had a liberal heart, and deprived herself of many enjoyments in order to provide for relations who stood in need of her assistance. She was animated, cheerful, and intelligent in conversation, and her remarks were not taken on trust, but were the effects of acute penetration. She was very handsome in youth, and retained much of her beauty and elegance till her death. End of chapter 81